As our cluster is configured with capacity scheduler, now let us go ahead and run some sample jobs and see the behavior of the cluster based upon capacity scheduler. So first let us delete this and try to run a job without specifying any queue. I copied this uh, Hadoop FS-RM command and then I'm opening another session and connecting to the gateway node of the cluster using SSH. As we are connected to the gateway node, now we can actually run this Hadoop FS-RM command to delete this directory. As it is deleted, now we can actually run this command which uses parcels. And if, if you look at this command, we did not specify any queue here. And if you paste this, it will fail saying that there is no default queue. Because when we actually configure capacity scheduler, we configured with only three queues. One is prod, second one is QA, third one is dev. As there is no default queue, we will not be able to submit the jobs without specifying the queue. If you want to submit the jobs without specifying the queue, we have to create a default queue as well. And also it should have some capacity allocated to it. That being said, now we'll actually try to submit the jobs by specifying the queues. First, we'll try to submit multiple jobs into prod queue and see what happens. And then we'll try to go to the other queues and submit the jobs and we will see the behavior. So here we can directly copy paste this command to submit the job because we have already cleaned up this directory, user IT versity word count, and hence we don't need to delete it again. We can just submit this command and you can see that it is submitted to the queue called prod. And you can hit enter. As the job being submitted, we can go to the resource manager UI and refresh this scheduler page. And you will see that the allocations from the prod queue will be given to this uh, job. Let's refresh this once again. It is still in the process of submitting the job. And now the job is submitted and you can see that 10 containers are being used because the capacity given to this queue is nothing but 50%. And if you expand this, you can see the absolute capacity is 50% and user capacity is a bit more than that because in the boundary conditions, it might take a bit or less, uh, a bit more or less resources than it is configured with. That being said, earlier I have mentioned that because absolute max capacity is 100%, it might be able to use the resources from the other queues. That seems to be not true. It is not using the total capacity here. It is only using a bit more than 50%. Now let us submit another job which will require fewer resources. The earlier job which we have submitted required 279 containers to process the data because we are trying to process 30 GB of data which is divided into 270 blocks and then we have specified 8 as number of reducers and one application master so total it required 279 containers. Now I will be submitting this job where it requires 9 map tasks, 8 reducers and one application master total 18 containers and see the behavior. So the output directory which is being used for this job is this one. It might be already there. So first we need to delete this. Again, I, I'm opening another session here and connecting to the gateway node of the cluster, deleting this output directory, which might be there as part of the earlier job executions and then submitting this uh, command. Once again, this also goes to the prod queue. You can see here, job is submitted. You can click on this or you can copy paste this into the browser. This is the new job. As of now, it is still in unassigned or uh, accepted state only, which means it did not get any resources. You can also refresh this page and see the details. Only the application which is submitted earlier got all the capacity. You can click on this link also to go to the job page to see the progress. Even if the containers are moved to completed state, the next job will not get the capacity until the capacity required for this job is less than the total capacity of the queue which is nothing but 10 GB memory and 10 containers or 9 GB memory and 50% uh, of the containers. You can see that 9 moved to complete state, 13 moved to complete state but still 9 are running and the other job did not get any resources yet. Even though there are containers which are being moved to complete state with respect to this earlier job, the next job is not getting any resources. Now let us submit the job to a different queue. So here I'm opening another session, connecting to the gateway node. Once I'm connected to the gateway node, I'm pasting this uh, Hadoop FS-RM command to remove this output directory if it exists. And then I'm actually submitting to QA queue. And for our QA queue, the capacity is 40%. So it should be able to use that much capacity immediately. We can go to this uh, resource manager UI and refresh this page. And you can see that the resources are being allocated to QA queue immediately. So the job is still being submitted. It is procuring the resources to process the data. Now if I refresh, still it is in unassigned state. Let us see. Now it is started actually. So it should actually show the capacity. So prod and QA. You can see now as part of QAQ, the running containers 
are 8 allocated cpu v cores are 8 and it is using approximately 8 gb of memory and you can click on this application master and you should be able to see the progress of the job so this is how you can actually um, schedule the jobs to multiple queues on a cluster and ensure that all the uh, departments within the organization or all the applications within the, within the organization that are related to different departments get their fair share of resources uh, using the queues so this is how we can actually plan for multi-tenant clusters in an uh, organization either we can use phase scheduler or capacity scheduler irrespective of the scheduler you use between these two you need to define the queues and you have to allocate the resources and uh, then multiple applications from different departments can be deployed on the same cluster and each one of them can get the resources this is this strategy is primarily used for larger organizations where we have very big cluster and too many applications from several departments are being deployed on that cluster